like to welcome you to the Tuesday, May 21st, 2013 meeting of Los Angeles County Board of Commissioners. Call the meeting in order. And would you give the application, please? Thank you. Father, we thank you for the blessings that we have in our lives, for the freedoms that we enjoy, for the beautiful area in which we live, for the ability to come together and, and discuss issues and make decisions that are for the good of the entire community. We ask your blessing on this meeting, on each and every one here, on those who are suffering in Oklahoma as a result of the tornado, and all those who need your blessing and guidance at this time. For these things we pray. Amen. Amen. Jerry, will you speak pledge, please? Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agendas put out this time to everybody. I know Kathy was gone, so did yes, that was taken care of on Friday before. One of them took care of history. So they did. So they didn't get one. Steve didn't get one. Uh, there will be no problem with that. You're taken care of. Thank you. Good. You got one. Thank you. We did. Anybody else not get one? David, you didn't get one? No, sir. Not an email sent to me. No, sir. I'll check your time. We'll count the numbers. Okay. Thank you. Motion approved. The agenda is presented. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Vader? Yes. Commissioner Loudon? Yes. Commissioner Vader? Yes. Consideration of the minutes, the regular meeting minutes of May 7th, 2013. Is there any additions or corrections? Second. I guess you're going to move the vote. Motion is better. The motion is to approve the regular meeting minutes of May 7th, 2015. Roll call. Commissioner Loudon? Yes. Commissioner Vega? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Reading of correspondence, Commissioner of Committee Reports, Commissioner Vega? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Loudon? You know, I, I just want to say one thing about the water festival that was held last week. Uh, if anybody ever needs anybody to organize something, you need to get a hold of Tom Perry. Yes. I mean, friend flawlessly, 1,700 kids there. I mean, there's no pickups. Uh, he used to be, he and his staff are being, to be commended on how well they put that together. And, Fun to watch. <laughs> I had a phone call. Thanking what the county employees did, and uh, I thought that was pretty neat. And they said they were doing a good job. We have two things. Um, well, we're going to talk about this one a little later. Uh, just keep one of it. Pass one down. It's a CDBG between. The Long consideration between Hopi and Potero County and us, it's good. And also, yesterday there was a mutual aid agreement handed to me, and I know we've been working on this, but I guess everybody signed this but us. So, here's copies of that too. We also have an email from Dan Dalkey, I guess that's how you pronounce it, from CDOT. They're wanting to close 160 for five days, put in a bridge. Their thought is it's going to save CDOT about $500,000. I'm not sure where that bridge is at. And Commissioner Lyle did brought up, I see in an email, some questions about that they need to talk to the leadership of Ken and how it affect the school buses and stuff one time. So we need to just come in and just pick it. I guess that's all I got. 
Item 4 is public comment. A presentation by Mr. Doug Dowler, Executive Director of SCAD, Southern Colorado Economic Development District. Floor is yours, sir. With your permission, I'll uh, present to you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Doug Dowler. I'm the uh, somewhat new executive director for the Southern Colorado Economic Development District. I came on board the first of this year. Uh, most people recognize right off the bat, as soon as I open my mouth, I'm not from Colorado, but I sure hope to be soon. I'm working hard at it. I have uh, come from a background of 26 years as a commercial banker, 17 years as a community developer. I've worked in the East Texas area, South Central Oklahoma, um, and several other spots in between during that time. I'm very proud to be here in Colorado. I look forward to uh, working with each and every one of our counties. I feel like this is an outstanding opportunity for myself personally, but I feel like it's a good opportunity for Southern Colorado. Without a doubt, we've all suffered in the last few years. And economic development is one of those tools that we have of which we continue to fight to preserve jobs and preserve our economy. Without any question, agriculture is a strong uh, segment of the southeastern Colorado economy. With the current drought situation and uh, other factors affecting it, agriculture has continued to suffer. What we would like to do is continue to work towards uh, finding opportunities in our agricultural segments. Uh, we created an agricultural committee. Uh, in fact, they're meeting tomorrow uh, that will be addressing several issues that we want to try to address in the coming years. But back to SCED for a minute. And SCED is the acronym that most people recognize us by. SCED has been an organization in, in business since 1968. It has a very long and proud history. But like many organizations, it's had its ups and its downs. I hope now is an upswing. I'm here to make sure that that happens. I have standing orders for my board of directors to get out, to meet with county commissioners, and make myself available to you. And I give you my word and I promise that I will. And that's part of my purpose of being here today. Um, I look forward to working with Los Angeles County and seeing what tools we can bring to assist you in your economic development here. Uh, we have appointments today with several of your economic development leaders here that we'll be making calls on and offering our services as well as our talents to them. In this first five months of the year, we've already uh, instigated several new programs at SCID. We have uh, pretty much a new staff there. Uh, myself, and then including Ms. E. McLish, he's with me today. Uh, she is our economic development specialist. He comes to us from Fremont County Economic Development, where she had 26 years as the executive director there in the economic development. Also, we have Joyce Clark. Joyce has been with SCED for about seven years, and she's our loan specialist. In addition to doing economic development, SCED also administers the SBA 504 and 78 programs. We are, we are a certified development corporation, meaning that we're a preferred lender under SBA and can submit SBA applications. Uh, we've already on our second application this year, which actually is a 100% increase over last year. So uh, we look to do uh, many more of those in the coming months uh, there. As uh, Commissioner Hill mentioned, we are also uh, working on administering uh, revolving business loan funds. Uh, we are working with Pueblo County, uh, administering a half million dollar revolving loan fund with them. And as of yesterday, we will now be administering the uh, Los Angeles Otero County revolving loan fund. So we have a lot of good plans, a lot of ideas, and things to bring about some business lending in Trinidad and Los Angeles counties. As I said, the purpose of my visit today is first to introduce myself to you, to let you know some of the programs that we're doing at SCID, uh, one of which is the Opportunity Knox program. 
We've had uh, the second in a three-part series where we have actually invited economic development administrators from across the district to come in and meet with potential lending as well as funding sources. We had the first one of these in January in Pueblo. We had about 27 participants there. But we had everybody from the uh, SBA, the Economic Development Administration, uh, Colorado Housing Finance, uh, banks, uh, National Development Council, as well as some private equity investors that were there to meet with potential project developers throughout the district. We had an opportunity to sit down and have a face-to-face, one-on-one conversation with how can I get my project done. And from that then, we, we are keeping track. There are several projects throughout the district that are working with those funding sources to come and become a reality. We had the second of our Opportunity Knox Conference in Los Angeles, and uh, we had a little bit of a weather issue that day, but I'm still very proud to know that we had 22 participants. Uh, again, we had people like the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City was there. Uh, we had uh, DOBA was there. We had the USDA was there. Just to mention a few of the sources of funding and, and uh, grants and things that were available. I know Larry was there and participated with us that day. Appreciate you coming out and facing the weather. It was difficult, without a doubt. But uh, we got the third and final of our Opportunity Knox uh, conferences coming up in September. Uh, that'll be over in uh, Buena Vista. And it'll be much of the same type of format that we've had before. We are uh, already, this year, as I said, had a 100% increase in our SBA lending from last year, which means we've made two compared to none last year. Uh, I think we'll probably do somewhere in the neighborhood of half to three quarter of a million dollars in loan funds under the SBA 504 program this year. Um, BLF, business loan funds. Um, Pueblo was in a very similar shape as to what Los Angeles and Ontario is right now. They had unused funds from the previous year. They were in the second of their contract extensions. Uh, we were able to get those funds out the door for them. Then we were able to use part of their revolve funds, and now we're actually going back and asking for more funding from them. So we're getting the money out to the small businesses that desperately need those programs. Right there. So to make a long story short, SCED has changed. We've got a new SCED now. We've got a positive attitude and we're here to help and to assist the counties. Uh, we're here to work for you. And uh, I give you my word that we're always available. We, we encourage you to work with us. Uh, we'll definitely work for you. And uh, if there's anything that I or my staff can do to assist you, we stand ready and willing to help. Um, just call. We'll be there. So I'll be happy to entertain any questions or answer any comments. I guess I have one comment. The OP, that's Otero Partners Incorporated, which is Los Angeles County and Otero County. Since I've been a commissioner, I don't believe there's been on one of those loans in this county. Prior, quite a few years ago there was. Uh, and, I, and I guess yesterday as we talked, I think maybe with Skid's involvement, hopefully there will be some more involvement in that loan program. Part of it, uh, as we discussed yesterday, I think his boots on the ground, as Brian Ryan said. We talked about it, talked about it, but maybe it was Gates involvement. Roundabout way, maybe it can be used. So, uh, thank you for coming and visiting with us, and uh, I wish you a lot of luck because that's a good program. It used to be. So. Well, and it will be, and uh, I think you'll see some activity in Los Angeles. I'm here today to start right now. So uh, we look forward to uh, Commissioner Bader as your representative to our Board of Directors meetings. I encourage you, if at all possible, you know, all of y'all are welcome to come. Uh, but they're, they're pretty informative. Uh, we try to keep you up to date on what's happening and what's going on in there. And we look forward to your input as well. And it's a good, good networking opportunity as well. So. Our next one's coming up July the 3rd, uh, there in Pueblo, so if you can make it, we'll, we'll be glad to have you. Any other questions? I just have a couple. Um, 
Um, how many board of directors do you have on schedule? 28. 28. And are you, do you have a full board? We do not. Actually, Los Angeles County has a vacancy right now. And uh, you have uh, Commissioner Beta and uh, Louis Weinberg, but you have a, a vacancy, which you remind me again the category that needs to be filled. Someone, uh, it would be nice if we could get someone that sits on a workforce board. Workforce board, chamber of commerce executive. Or uh, post-secondary education. Or post-secondary education. College. And you are the governing board that appoints those, that person to our board. So we would very much encourage you to, if you can, uh, appoint one of those categories as soon as you can. And then one other question. As, uh, other than the Los Angeles Sotero RLF uh, funds, some of these others that you mentioned are businesses from Los Angeles County eligible besides the Pueblo County RLF. Yeah, certainly the, uh, the SBA programs, uh, they are absolutely available to us for. We are currently developing other loan products out there. We are uh, working with USDA Real Development on a, uh, another revolving loan pool of loans. Uh, I hope that becomes a reality by the third or fourth quarter of this year. Uh, that will be eligible there. Um, we have other sources, private investments, uh, National Development Council funds, um, just a wide source. When you work with a small business, it's all about layering and, and putting different pieces of the pie together. Uh, we work with the local banks here uh, to try to get you know their portion and then fill in the gaps as we can with the rest of it. So uh, there's a lot. Okay. Just one comment. Hi, attend the opportunity knock session in Los Angeles and I think what like Leanne is asking and stuff, those sessions with all the players there really gives you a lot more in-depth understanding of the coordination they're doing and how they're pulling all those pieces together. But there's a lot of information, a lot of <clears throat> possibilities out there that's trying to get the right fit and I think that's the funnel that it needs to go through to get there. Once we have some even potential opportunities out there to funnel them into the, to this group, I think it's the right way to go. Thank you. Do you have questions? You're meeting with um, through the Los Angeles County Economic Development Team. We are. We are. Uh, we're also meeting with the um, Help me out. Uh, some of the banks around town we're going by and visiting today, so there's several. Good busy day. Good night, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other comments? We might have some Expanding 
exponentially uh, each year. And my request is uh, that those two trees that block the plants be removed. And the second part of that is permission to get the plants restored. I've spoken to some artists in town who are willing to do that restoration uh, without cost to the county, um, the, to do the research to make sure that they get the colours of the uh, emblems for each organisation uh, perfect. Um, and I think within the town we have uh, an infinite resource in terms of artistry and artists um, who are capable of doing a first rate job and getting those, those things all cleaned up. But the first, first thing is, uh, is to remove the trees and as they're part of the county property, um, I'm asking for, uh, for that permission now. Um, they're a bit beyond my small electric chainsaw um, and uh, I believe the county probably has the resources to, uh, to knock them down pretty quick and maybe there are some uh, people who could well use the fire as it's uh, so it's Cypress or Breathe is um, they put down with firewood, so that, that would be a, a use, useful acquisition to somebody without it going to the dump, I'm sure. Um, so that's my request, and uh, uh, so it's a double thing. One is remove the trees, and second is have, get permission once they're removed to um, organize a, a group of artists to restore those plants back to the original condition. Which, which side? Uh, I don't know. They're on the north side of, uh, of, of the Fort Wooden Memorial Square. Uh, they face First Street and there's a row of them. Um, I think there's about six or seven or more. Each of the little huts, I believe, had a plaque on it representing which organization. Yes, there's the, the plaques there around the Yay wide and probably six to eight feet tall, um, and there's the six of them side by side. So when you say you're going to get artists to repair, uh, you're going to redo them, put up new plaques? No, no, just restore what is there now. Each has the name of the organization, the days that they used to meet back in 1936, 1937, um, and, uh, and they have down at the bottom uh, around up this size, uh, the emblem of that particular organization, the VFW American Legion. Uh, some of those organizations don't exist anymore, um, but they're still part of that commemoration of uh, what Fort Wooden is all about. Let's, let's work on that, and hopefully the end or somebody will get back in touch with you. Yeah, okay. Do you want to bring this down and see what we can do? If you can think about that, then uh, you just need to know you have my phone numbers and two and that would be most, most appreciated. Um, I've spoken with uh, Carol Bordeaux, who happens to be my wife, and it's pretty, pretty easy to get up to her, and she's volunteered, um, you know, got the autistic, and to organize you know, different art groups and then to, to do you know, one one block per each. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? I just think Laura walked in. Laura Gutierrez, Senate Funeral Representative. Nice to see you all. Good morning. Nice to see you, Laura. Yep. Do you have any comments? No, thanks. Here to listen uh, and see where we can help. No other public comment. Any jury report that they? Um, I don't have any report of the questions at this session. Administrator's report from Um, Commissioners, for your information and for the members of the public and the press, we will have a, another uh, special meeting next Tuesday, uh, immediately following the Department of Human Services meeting at 9 o'clock. We will meet as the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we have a, a couple items on the agenda as well as some public hearings on the abatements. Uh, so that will be next Tuesday on May 28th. Um, one other item, we did open uh, bids 
on the uh, airport water line project on Friday. Uh, Larry handled that. Uh, we've got a bid tabulation worksheet uh, prepared by um, Bob Just, our engineer, uh, that uh, we will be reviewing, reviewing along with legal counsel to make sure that everything's in compliance with the IGA and the city. I believe that's being addressed as well. Um, if all is in order, we will probably consider those bids. Roden Green Supervisor for Tremont County. Good morning, Commissioners. First, part of the pass is officially open for the summer. We'll keep it open until we start getting our first snowfall, which I hope is soon next fall. We'll close it again for the winter. It's going to be about the earliest that's ever happened. Yeah, it is. Usually it's Memorial Day weekend, and we usually have to open the plow into the snow. Not this year. I'll go through a quick synopsis of April's costs. We uh, produced 5,738 tons of base material out of our airport pit for $4.12 a ton. That includes $2.28 per ton for stripping and part of our reclamation, which in my opinion has to be or should be included in those costs. 24% of what we're screening is actually reject this is a lot that's over our two inch screen over the top size. So those costs could be reduced by a quarter of what they are. Um, we hold 3,547 tons to Sarcio Canyon, 1184 a ton. Placed uh, those same amount of tons, just 3,547 or $1.67 a ton for a total project cost uh, 1754 per ton. Spent $50,000 laying roads, $1,000 cleaning culverts, $1,700 cleaning calabards, $157 on size, $610 on delineators, $23,000 maintenance and repair of equipment, that's labor costs only. $4,300 patching potholes, 173 trimming trees, and we actually had enough snow to spend $11,293 removing it off our county roads. <laughs> Way up high. <laughs> and that's all I've got. Phil, what was the $17.54 <clears throat> per ton? How much ground on there? Uh, that was for 3,547 tons that went to Sarcio Canyon. That included our production <coughs> costs, our haulage costs, and our placement costs. We all that? Yes, sir. The haulage was 1184 tons. Questions? Thank you, sir. Adam said it was a public hearing to help the block for this to go on. Under new business um, item B then is consideration of bid results for the uh, chip seal cover coat material for road bridge design. Commissioners, we solicited bids for the production of our cover coat material, in essence, chips, half inch minus to a quarter inch on the bottom end. With the following results, we're one to produce about 2,300 tons of chips for chip seeding this year, which I will add will not take place until at least after the first part of August. We have the monies that we have budgeted for for the purchase of oils tied up in a grant submission, so we're going to wait until we see how that proposal goes before we actually place those chips. Um, with the following results, Tucker Custom Service, $12 per ton, Tamarock Gravel, $20 per ton, Leone Gravel, no bid, Universal Landscape, no bid, and Alpine Aggregate, no bid. Alpine Aggregate is a company that used to work out of Rye. I'm not sure where they're located now. We went online and elsewhere, even with phone books, decks, etc., trying to locate <coughs> some contact information without any luck. Considering the addition of the 8% preference points, which is what our procurement policy says we must do, um, Tucker is still less expensive.